Now, one of the recurrent political themes of the past decade has been climate change. It hasn't been so much a battle over whether the Earth's climate is changing. After all, it has since time began. But it's about what causes it and what, if anything, we can do about it. Let me be clear to you. My position is pretty simple. Climate change is an entirely natural event that man plays no significant role in. There is even less we can do to actually stop it. Now, yes, I'll admit, I'm not a climate scientist, but you don't have to be to understand how the climate has changed through millennia. It was changing before the Industrial Revolution. It was changing before human existence. And yet now we're apparently the major cause. It's total nonsense, of course, but it has been used to great effect to scare people into behavioural change. Governments have surrendered their sovereignty to participate in useless global climate compacts, most often put forward by the United Nations. We've had rational adults outsource their own cognitive processes to a troubled young woman. You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words, and yet I'm one of the lucky ones. People are suffering, people are dying, entire ecosystems are collapsing. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction, and all you can talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you? Ah, dear Greta, she's effectively become the polar bear of the 2020s. You may recall it was only a decade ago when we were told polar bears were dying out due to climate change using this iconic picture. Well, it was a total fabrication designed to present emotion as fact. But so much of what passes as climate science is actually emotional claptrap. One man who's always stood in the face of that, always stood for fact and truth, over the emotional nonsense is Professor Emeritus Ian Plymer. I'm delighted to say Ian joins me now. Um, Ian, I'm going to kick off with this. For so long, people have been told that 97% of scientists have agreed that man is causing climate change. I've heard that from former presidents, former prime ministers. I've heard it repeated ad nauseum in the media. Is it true? Well, thank you for having me on the inaugural Bernardi. Uh, it is true if you cook the books. And that was a survey of nearly 10,000 people who are eminently unemployable unless they can frighten us about climate catastrophes and future disasters. Out of those nearly 10,000 people, there were 3,000 who were stupid enough to respond. Now, these were not climate scientists. Many of these were activists. Many of these were people who sit around scratching themselves, looking at the next thing that they can frighten us with. And out of those 3,000 responses, 77 were chosen. And the 77 uh, comes to a figure of 77 activists who were asked a Dorothy Dixer question. Now, what that's telling us is this was cooked. And it was cooked by a chap called Cook, who has since left Australia and the country's a much better place as a result of it. Now, 97.1 sounds like a really accurate scientific measurement. First decimal place. That survey is absolute total codswallop. That survey has got nothing to do with reality. That survey and the criticism of it can be found in 10 seconds by any journalist. They keep quoting it. Now, this means they're either fellow travellers or they're fraudulent or they're terribly lazy. I suspect it's all three. So we have this figure <laughs> quoted all the time. It is wrong. Absolutely, totally Ian, wrong. Well, Ian, you're a, a geologist. You observe changes to the earth over much longer time frames than modern, uh, modern uh, temperature records would indicate. Give us this 30-second... This history of the Earth's climate and what the actual records show through uh, the geology of the planet? Well, we happen to be a planet that is in the Goldilocks zone, and that is where we don't boil off our oceans and we don't freeze our oceans. On our planet, we have solid, liquid and vapour water, and it's that water vapour in the atmosphere that drives changes in the climate, which is then driven by the sun. This has been happening since the first Thursday on planet Earth, 4,567 million years ago. 
climate has always changed for a great many reasons. It's changed because sometimes we've been in the wrong position of the galaxy. Sometimes we have wobbled one way and then wobbled another way. Sometimes we've had the solar cycles change a little bit. Sometimes we've had the moon pushing warmer water into the Arctic. Climate is always changing for a great diversity of reasons. For pretty well the whole history of planet Earth, we have had carbon dioxide contents in the atmosphere much higher than now, yet we've had ice ages. It is logical that you cannot have climate change driven by carbon dioxide, whether it's natural or whether it's from human activities. No one has ever shown that human emissions of carbon dioxide drive climate change. And when Senator Malcolm Roberts pursued the CSIRO about this, they admitted that this was the case. And here we've got Australia's premier research organisation admitting that the whole basis of this climate change scare is based on a total furphy. But this is the point. This, the smart people are, are falling for this. This is an agenda that is being pushed principally by the Greens, but others have fallen, become vulnerable to it. Why are they falling to, for it? And what is the ultimate agenda of those who are, are really pushing this very hard? Well, by pushing it very hard, you can make an enormous amount of money, you can have a huge amount of power without having to face elections, you can frighten people witless, and we as homo sapiens are hardwired to look over our shoulder for the woolly mammoth that's coming to get us. And fear always beats logic, and it will take a long time before people realise that there will have been trillions of dollars spent on an absolute bogus scare campaign. We've had these uh, campaigns in the past, we've had these financial frauds in the past, like the South Sea bubble, like the tulip craze, and we're in one of those. And we are so wealthy, we can afford to waste money on stupidity. So we're being exploited because we're frail humans, we're being exploited by people who are wanting power, and if you want to make an enormous amount of money get into the renewables energy industry because the only thing renewable about it is your check account. It keeps getting filled up.